Greetings. My name is Dr. Waddell Brooks, Sr., your host, and this is Community Forum. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an exemplary person with us this evening, a person that's not new on the program, uh, Minister William Hutchison, Jr., uh, from Zion, Illinois. And we're going to be talking about finding a purpose in the midst of change. Good evening, uh, Minister Hutchinson. Good evening, Dr. Brooks. Uh, we're very happy, literally, that you're taking time from your busy schedule to be with us uh, this uh, evening to let uh, Lake County know who you are. And I, like I mentioned, you are a person that Lake County should know. By the way, Lake County is approximately, oh, 750 to 800,000 people. Wow. And, uh, but uh, if you have not been known all over the world, you will be after this show. Well, thank you. Because we, we go online. You thank know, you. So people in Japan or Korea, Australia, wherever, uh -huh. will be listening. And I think it's very important they, they should know your um, the information that you will be promulgating as Thank a user in the Navy, okay, promulgating okay, yes. the information uh, to them. Um, first of all, I'd like for you to tell our listening audience a little bit about your personal and professional background. Well, thank you. Um, I was born to William Edward Hutchison Sr. and Janie Ruth Martin in 1961. Okay. Um, I grew up in Marion Jones Housing Projects. I was graduate, a graduate of North Chicago Community High School in 1979. Mm. And I also am a graduate of Western Illinois University in Macomb, Illinois. Mm -hmm. And uh, December 6th will be my 30th anniversary as a civil service employee. And wow. December 20th, the change <laughs> that I'm facing is I'll be retiring after 30 years of civil service. Fantastic. Uh, now, the change you mentioned, uh, is that a change that you had planned on? Uh, or is it? Uh, Not necessarily. Um, in the last three years, I literally missed nine months of work. Hmm. Being in serious, uh, wrestling with a serious health issue of of uh, heart failure. Okay. And uh, most recent tests showed that my heart function had decreased again. Mm -hmm. So it was forcing me to retire at this time right now. But just because I'm retiring does not mean that my purpose has ended or that it's over. That there, there, there are many ways that I can continue to serve God and serve my fellow man uh, even retired, and so I'm looking forward to that season. Now you're retiring, but you're eligible to retire, though, yes. right? Yes, yes. You have to be f at least 56 years of age, okay, and have 30 years of uh, experience, 30 years on the job, uninterrupted service. Okay. And so, just this September 10th, I made 58 years old. Okay, and December 6th is uh, my 30th anniversary as a civil service employee. So I will meet both, re both requirements. This is fantastic. You mentioned about um, <clears throat> Marion Jones project at that time, but how did you feel seeing the whole area demolished? Well, it was mixed feelings. Um, I am working on a series of drawings right now called cultural, cultural cannibalism. Mm -hmm. And what it's about is how in housing projects you stack a lot of people in a s small location. Mm -hmm. And then because they have limited resources, sometimes you can feed on one another. Mm -hmm. And so, but when I look back over the years and, and, and all of the relationships that were cultivated during that time, we literally all grew together and we all loved each other and so you had mixed feelings on one hand you know that the chapter had ended but instead of closing the book uh, of faith you turn the page with expectation about what God has next mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I had m mixed feelings on one hand you know that was a chapter that was ended and there were a lot of memories 
On the other hand, you know, you have to move on and you have to mm -hmm. make new memories. Mm -hmm. Yes, in the area now, it's a new development. Yes. Now, and uh, there'll be some new experiences here right. by the people that are, that are moving in. Yes. I mention that because I have a similar experience, and uh, I was raised in East St. Louis in mm -hmm. a community called Goose Hill. That was the name of it. Yes. But it was a, a, a really entire development. Yes. And I went back on October 5th, um, to receive an award, yes. but that whole community, mm -hmm. and I thought about that when I saw Marion Jones go down, yeah. is demolished. Yeah, yeah. I can see a few homes, right. but that whole area. Yeah, the community. Community. It's changed. It, it, right. Yes. So when you mentioned about uh, change, uh, I thought, but back to what we were talking about though, God made man for a specific purpose, right? Yes, yes. Um, we have people that look at, they don't know why they're mm -hmm. here. Yeah. You know. That's right. But tell us about God's purpose. Yes. I, I, I know God can do what he wants to do. Amen. You know, you know. Amen. But he had a specific purpose for man. Amen. And, and for me, uh, when I was 11 months old, I was burned critically. Mm. by high grease. I suffered third degree burns uh, where I accidentally pulled an entire black kettle skillet of hot grease on the side of my head. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so I grew up in a time when everyone had an afro. Okay. You know, say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud, and you had your fro. Mm -hmm. And, you, and uh, you had your pick to, to be able to pick out your fro. But I grew up with a bald spot on the side of my head from my third degree burns. And uh, I learned to be better in spite of instead of bitter because of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it helped me build muscles in my character and helped me be more compassionate and sensitive to other people's needs. Mm -hmm. And uh, out of that hardship, I developed the skill of teaching myself how to play the instrument of bass guitar and mm. I've played all over the world playing bass. I've played in bands that have opened for Tim McGraw, for Keith Urban, for mm -hmm. Rascal Flatts. I've played in Switzerland, Austria, Germany. And uh, I've met people from all different walks of life, but it all began from those humble days at Marion Jones Housing Projects. And amazing. I've met and, and worked with amazing talent. and. Uh, I'm excited about uh, all of the riches that were before me that I had no idea, but I just kept stepping by faith, stayed positive, and opportunities opened up to me. Um, Mr. Hutchinson, you um, received a special blessing since you were on, I mentioned you were here on the program last time. Matter of fact, you been on the program a couple of times. Yes. But since the last time you received a special blessing, you want to tell us about it? You know. Um, probably many blessings that you receive, but this is a special one. Well, Proverbs 18.22 says, <laughs> a man who finds a wife finds a good thing All right. and obtains favor from the Lord. So I am so grateful to God for Tina Graves, now Hutchison, Okay. My wife, we just celebrated our eight month anniversary of being wedded. Congratulations. And, uh, huh? I literally, this woman is so amazing that she changed my prayer life. I used to pray later in the day. Okay. Now I get up every morning thanking Jesus for her. Yeah. That's, that begins my prayers every morning. I uh, says, uh, like I tell everyone about my wife, I caught her when she fell from heaven. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, this is fantastic. May you have uh, many years of a wedding. Thank you, sir. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, now, now um, we spoke about finding purpose in the midst of change. Yes. Um, we, we, you want to elaborate on that? Yeah. What I wanted to share briefly was that when you literally look at nature, you see everything is made to have a relationship with something outside of itself. Okay. And that nothing in and of itself exists for just itself. Even the bird's wings have a purpose 
and that purpose, if you look at the shape of, as an artist, I look at shapes and designs and engineering. Okay. <clears throat> I look at feathers because I look at the way they are shaped, the way they're divinely engineered with the purpose. And then I realized its purpose was to have a relationship with the wind. Oh. Well, just like a bird's wings have a purpose, to have a relationship with what cannot be seen. I can't see the wind, but I can see what the wind does. Mm -hmm. But I might not be able to see God, but I can see the way God works and the way he does things so marvelously. So my purpose in the earth is to have a relationship first with him who created me, and then a relationship with others, and then choose to be a part of the answer and not a part of the problem. Mm -hmm. Even as a minister, when I traveled overseas and played in secular venues, mm -hmm. I didn't change because I had received the nature of my father. Mm -hmm. So I didn't drink, I didn't smoke, I didn't do drugs, I didn't touch groupies. Okay. I was the same person wherever I played that I, as I was when I was in church mm. because I carried the Lord in my heart at the relationship I have with the Lord. And then I was able to listen to and be compassionate to whatever anyone else was going through and then be able to share with them with a hand extended instead of a finger pointed. Because if I introduce you to Jesus and you see Christ in me, Mm -hmm. then that's up to God how he deals with you in blessing and healing areas in your life. But I in love share that not from a pedestal. Uh, if I even thought someone was in quicksand, my finger won't help them out of it, but my hands might. Mm. And that's motivated by love and not judgment. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Adam knew his purpose in life because God told him yeah. what he wanted him to do, right? Yes, he did. But, but what happened, uh, he decided to uh, stray away and use fig leaves uh, to, to cover his, his body? Yeah. Yeah, I uh, just so, ministered a message last night that your fig leaves do not produce the fruit of fellowship. Mm. That man seeks to find a way to remedy his sin, the things that he does wrong. And Adam chose and Eve to cover themselves with fig leaves. But even though they covered themselves with fig leaves, it did not resolve the issue of their broken fellowship. Oh. So they hid from the presence of God when they heard him walking in the garden. Mm -hmm. It said they hid themselves. So the thing is, even though they dealt with the issue of nakedness, they hadn't dealt with their broken fellowship. Mm. And in Mark 11, Jesus cursed a fig tree that was full of leaves, but it had no fruit. Mm -hmm. And then he put all of the money changers and the so-called ministers, the Pharisees and Sadducees out of the temple because they, they didn't, even though it was supposed to be a house of prayer, they used it just to make money. Yeah. And, there, and, and that, that, that same Jesus was there when he created figs and created trees and created all life. On the third day, he created plants, he created trees, he created fruit, he created seed. He did that, he was there. But the thing was, is man tried to cover what he had done with a fig, leaves, but it didn't solve the issue of fellowship. And that was the thing, and we have to be so careful that we don't get caught up in religion, that we miss out on our relationship with our Creator. Sometimes people put so much energy in not getting caught mm -hmm. that they miss out on their relationship with God because they're trying so hard to be honored amongst each other mm -hmm. instead of having the approval of God. Look at my position. Look at my position. No, it's not about your position. Look at your inner condition. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Saul, 
was confronted by Samuel for not obeying the Lord, okay, when he was supposed to just wipe out all the Amalekites and he said, but I took the best of everything. At first he said, I did what God said. Then he said, no, well, what is I'm hearing the bleeding of sheep Samuel said to him? Without getting too deep because we don't have time to cover it all. Mm -hmm. Saul was dark, like they say, tall, dark, and handsome. Okay. He said he stood a head length above everybody else. Mm -hmm. But even after he did wrong, he still was tall, dark, and handsome. He still had the title of a king, but the kingdom had been taken from him. And so that's where we can mess up. We say, look at my collar, look mm -hmm. at my title, look at my position. And it's like God is saying, no, let me heal your inner condition. Because if you're still struggling with all of your habits that you know that didn't come from me, then have you really put your all on the altar? Mm -hmm. you, you met the requirements amongst men. They think you're all good. But what about your position before me? And then we think because we can show the wrong in others that that, that absolves our own mess. King David, even a man after God's own heart, saw another man's wife, lusted mm -hmm. for her, took her, mm -hmm. and then tried to kill her husband, and did kill her husband. Mm -hmm. And then when he was confronted by the prophet Nathan, Nathan told him a story about a rich man and a poor man, and the rich man had plenty of sheep, but he had a guest in town, and he, slayed, he took the poor man's one sheep, even mm -hmm. though he had a flock. Mm -hmm. And he killed that sheep and he served it. And when David heard that story, he got so angry. He said, that man deserves to die. And then he said, but before you kill him, <laughs> he need to restore to that man <laughs> what he took from him fourfold. In other words, give him more back. And then because he could diagnose that story, he thought he was all good. And Nathan had to tell him, listen, but that man is you. Mm. So that's where we can get in trouble, where we start, because we, we can point out the wrong in everyone else. We don't see the wrong within ourselves and our need for our creator. So all the fig leaves, the titles, the awards, the recognition from mankind means nothing if it don't impress God. We do everything to an audience of one. Mm. So in the midst of my change, I understand that everything that I do has to be motivated by my love for him and my love for what he created and choose to be a part of the answer instead of a part of the problem. As soon as I mentioned, uh, what is man's purpose on earth? Or do man know what his purpose on earth is? I have never seen a Brinks truck behind a hearse yet. Yep. No, you, you know, all. you could accumulate all the gold, right. <coughs> diamonds, and so forth, mm -hmm. but you're going to leave it yep. at the grave. Right. So I, that, I, guess, I guess that begs the question then, what is real wealth? Okay. What is true treasure? And I'm finding at 58 now that true treasure is not about what you have, mm -hmm. but who you have. Okay. In your life that can love you unconditionally, that can appreciate you and who God made you to be and help you be all that you're created to be. Our purpose, if you look at the Lord's Prayer, he says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So if his kingdom comes within you, then let his will be done through you mm -hmm. on earth. Your purpose is fulfilled in others. Your purpose is fulfilled in how you serve others, how you build others, mm -hmm. how you give life and hope to others. And it's out of that treasure that you bless others. One movie that I, I've always liked, and my wife knows this about me, is the movie called It's a Wonderful Life, mm -hmm. which was directed by Frank Capua back in, I think, the 40s or the, or, or the 50s. But anyway, uh, Jimmy Stewart's in the movie, and he's George Bailey. And he reaches a point in his life where he wants to kill himself. Mm. And so 
he doesn't think that his life is worth much. And then the nemesis of the movie, Mr. Potter says, listen, you're worth more dead than you are alive. Mm -hmm. So his guardian angel who's looking out for him says, how can I help him? Because he's getting ready to commit suicide. And then he says, well, I wish I'd never been born. And so the angel gives him a chance to take a look at his life and all of the people he was not there to help and, and how the whole city, the whole area had changed because he wasn't there to make a difference that he could have made. Mm. So he got a glimpse at what life would have been like without him. Okay. And then at the end of the movie, uh, when everyone found out he was in trouble over a situation that he didn't even cause, all of the people brought forth money, money he didn't have, but he had love and appreciation for all he had done. So when his, even his brother came home, he said to George Bailey, who I get emotional. I, I almost cry every time I, I see that movie every year and I still cry. Mm. But he said the richest man in town, everybody, because of all the seed he had sown in the lives of others came to his rescue. Mm. So even the police that were there to arrest him, they put money in the pot too. It's like, that's what I'm talking about. I might not have it in my bank account, but I might have it in your heart. Yeah. I may have sown something in your heart that encouraged you or inspired you when you needed it. So when I need it, I've already made an investment. And when you start seeing souls as an investment and not an expense, okay. then you'll sow into them. But what comes out of that is they'll sow into others. And you never know, they might come back and sow into you. Let's talk about your uh, uh, experiences as an artist. What piqued your interest in being an artist? A part of it came out of, as a child, feeling helpless. Hmm. I felt helpless when I saw we were children and we went down south and I actually saw Jim Crow signs. Okay. in the early 60s and feeling like, wow, that's wrong. But I'm a child, I can't change that. Mm -hmm. So that feeling helpless, uh, feeling like I inherited a hand that I didn't choose, but I had to best, in the, to the best of my ability, play it and in a positive way. Uh, and so when I could draw, I started with a blank sheet of paper but when I could draw something special, I had the control to create a new world just by the images I was able to create on paper. Mm -hmm. So I didn't feel helpless or hopeless when I could create a vision from my own mind on, 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 on canvas or on paper, whether it be pencil or whether it be painting, mm -hmm. I could create a reality that was beyond the one I was living. And it gave me hope for living a reality beyond what I was experiencing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have contributed major painting and artistry um, at the Great Lakes Naval Base, right? You want yes. to tell us about some yeah. of those paintings? Well, um, in 1994, I met Admiral Matt Gaston. Yeah. He was the first African-American commanding officer of Great Lakes Base. Right. Him and Mr. Carl Ross worked together to help save Great Lakes Base when the Base Closure and Alignment Committee were looking at closing Great Lakes Base. Okay. Right now, Great Lakes Base is the quarter deck of the United States Navy. All recruits for the United States Navy come through Great Lakes Naval Training Center. Male or female? Male or female. They have to come through there for basic training. So boot camp for the entire United States Navy is at Great Lakes Naval Training Center. But Mr. Carl Ross and Mr. Mac Gaston, who just recently passed, bless him. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he just recently passed. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, he was responsible for saving Great Lakes Base. Great Lakes Base has 60,000 plus recruits that go through there every single year. 
Okay. And in from 1999 to the year 2000, I designed murals that take up the entire wall where they first arrive at boot camp. The bus comes in, and it, on the s each side of the walkway is the flags of the United States of America that's lit up by light. Mm -hmm. And when they arrive at boot camp, they have to walk the hall where I designed 260 feet worth of murals showing the Revolutionary War all the way to present days, even the 9-11, the uh, what happened. Okay. Uh, I did murals commemorating all of it, all the way from the Revolutionary War to today. And that's 260 feet worth of murals. And one of the main murals, which you can see on my uh, YouTube channel, I have a promo that shows a myriad of my drawings, my paintings, as well as the m digital mural designs at Great Lakes Naval Training Center. I even wrote the soundtrack to the well, presentation. Well, hopefully we can bring that up on the screen where our listeners can uh, um, find it there. Mm -hmm. So is, is, was that the same entrance uh, that um, the officers, um, black officers, the first black officers. Yeah, uh, I can't think it's of in the name? same building, the Golden Thirteen. The Golden Thirteen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's in the same. It's it's on the east side of the building. The the Golden Thirteen is on the west side of the building, but it's all still in Building fourteen oh five at Recruit Training Command. Now, some people ask me, can the public see that? No, they cannot. Uh, be, with the security issues that we have, yeah. uh, they have to have special credentials uh, to literally be able to even get on that side of the base. So the, the general public can't see it, but if you go mm -hmm. to my YouTube channel, you can see some of the mural designs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I went over that hurriedly, but the, the Golden 13 was 13, the first black officers that was commissioned for the United States, the United States Navy. Navy. Yes. They made the highest scores. Highest scores, yes. And uh, to my knowledge, they retested them to ensure, and they right. made higher scores, higher scores the right. second time yeah. around. You yeah. Know. But uh, the public cannot go through. No. Through there. No. Yeah, yeah. No. Okay. Now let's. <coughs> excuse me. Go to another area. Musician. Now, mm -hmm. when did you become interested in? Music. As a child. <laughs> my mom, uh, my mom was an amazing soul. Uh, unfortunately, my father was murdered on the south side of Waukegan off of Hemholtz. Oh. Uh, three weeks before my fifth birthday in 1966. And when he passed, uh, my mom went through a very difficult time. She even had a nervous breakdown. Mm. Uh, so... <clears throat> uh, while she was in the hospital, they, they asked her, what is it you want to do with your life? And she started talking about, well, I'm a widow. Uh, I, you know, I just have my high school diploma. They said, no, we didn't ask you what is your situation. We asked you, what do you want to do? Okay. If, if all things considered, what would you like to do? And she said, I would really like to do radio and TV. She wanted to be Oprah Winfrey before there was an Oprah Winfrey. Oh, okay. And so my mom did one of the most amazing things that I think any human has ever done. She graduated with a four-year degree with honors from Columbia College and got her Bachelor of Science degree in communications. Wow. And so uh, she took us to Chicago. She introduced us to Walter Jacobson and, and uh, uh, Bill Curtis. Okay. Uh, who were <coughs> at that time famous news anchors yeah. for Channel 2 News. Yeah. And uh, she opened up my whole way of thinking. Um, at the uh, radio station she worked, she brought home all of these different records from different artists. Mm -hmm. So even though I grew up in the Marion Jones housing projects, I listened to, my, I still had my James Brown and my Aretha and my Dionne Warwick. But I also had James Taylor. I also had Joni Mitchell. I had mm -hmm. all people from all different colors, from all different areas of life. And I had uh, four, uh, 
well, it was only four strings left on it, one of those box top acoustic guitars. Okay. And I took the bottom four strings and I taught myself how to play bass. Wow. From those bottom four strings. And over the years, I had many people that were inspirations to me. And your daughter, Yolanda, was one of my biggest inspirations when I was in high school. When I was a freshman in high school, I think she was a senior. And she was playing bass for the jazz band. Right. And so it was such an honor to see her Sunday, just this past Sunday. She was playing drums and I got on bass. <laughs> I raped. <laughs> and, and she said, you're doing some amazing things on the bass. And just to get that, 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 that amazing compliment from your daughter, I was almost in tears because she has no idea how much she inspired me. You never know. Yeah. The seeds that you play, yeah. they plant. Yeah. That's it. That's it. The seeds you sow is the harvest that grows. Okay. So I just rather would plant positive seeds, not give in to negativity. negativity. You're going to have haters. But yeah. I'm like this. Uh, if there's no friction, there can be no fire. Okay. In other words, one of the things that I learned from my martial arts instructor, who was also my college professor, the great sculpture artist Preston Jackson, he is phenomenal. I mean, phenomenal. One of the most talented people I've ever met in my life. Okay. He's an accomplished jazz musician. He's a world-class sculptor, painter. Mm. He has done a life-size sculpture of Miles Davis, commissioned bronze. He's done a life-size sculpture of Irv Cupsonit, famous Chicago radio and TV personality a life-size bronze sculpture of Richard Pryor for the city of Peoria. Okay. And he was one of my professors in college. And uh, you talk about uh, just a phenomenal inspiration. Um, but uh, with him and with other people, I've marked different people because my father was dead. Yeah. Adel Crump was one of the huge inspirations on me. I was barely getting through college and I met Adel Crump he was working at Dickens Design Group in Chicago, mm -hmm. and he was a, the only African-American executive that worked at that company. Mm -hmm. And he was the vice president. Uh, Armor Hot Dogs, Count Chocula, Frankenberries, all of that was designed by a black man. But I had no idea. But when I met him, I was so moved. I went back to college and made Dean's List. So what I did was I marked different people. You were one of those people too that I marked. Mm -hmm. People that were doing something positive in our community that I could look up to and I could see look like me. They had skin color like me and they were intelligent and they were articulate and they'd done great things. It made me believe I could do some great things. And so mm -hmm. thank you for your example and your inspiration. Well, well thank you, it. thank you for for letting me know, you never know. We spoke about planting seeds and and growing and so forth, but uh, you never know. Yeah. Uh, the thousands of people that that may have been helped Amen. through the school, you know, this type of thing. Um. So now you you one of the you have your own band now. Huh? Yeah. Billy's Band of Brothers. <laughs> okay. Well, I have uh, Jeremy Scott, who's one of the most phenomenal saxophone players in the world. He really mm -hmm. is. I have Devarius Wilson on the keyboards. Unbelievable prodigy. Unbelievable talent. I have Dennis Alex Marshall on the drums. Unbelievable talent. Not just talent, they're good people. Okay. And that's why I call them the Band of Brothers because they're extended family. I, I really uh, am grateful for their gift. And we just recently played at the 30th anniversary for the North Chicago Library uh, oh. just, uh, just a few, well, a month and a half ago. Mm -hmm. We were just there and uh, we did our thing. And uh, we're gonna do some stuff in the studio. Uh, now that I'm retiring, I'll have some time to explore further explore some of the songs that I have in mind. Especially I want to produce my wife and continue to be there for my daughter with her music career as well. Yeah, well we may just <clears throat> just mention that uh, your wife has a career in music. Matter of fact, my wife says she saw her on uh, 
Oh, Bob, Bobby Jones Gospel. Bobby Jones Gospel. Yes. Yeah, just right. recently she was on right. Bobby Jones Gospel. Right. Yes, right. yes. So everything has a good combination there. Uh, well, let's get down to uh, the reason you're wearing a collar now. Your ministry. Yes, sir. Now, what kind of piqued your interest in the ministry? Well, I've been a minister for over 20 years. Okay. Um, but I've been getting more involved in my ministry. And my pastor has seen a growth in me spiritually. Okay. And so I recently just took care, did my first, officiated my first wedding. Oh. Just uh, last Saturday for. Is that Mr. Ford? Yeah. Cornell Mr. Ford. Mr. Yeah. and Mrs. Cornell and King Kim Ford. Now, yeah, right, right. He's a phenomenal, phenomenal. Establishing the is it music career or the movies? Movies. He's, he's so. a writer. He's a he's written books. He is a, he's just a phenomenal human being. I call him my baby brother. Mm -hmm. He's adopted me as his big brother, and oh, I adopted okay. him as my baby brother. Yeah, he's been on the show uh, several times with his uh, his ministry there. And, film, film yes. making and so forth. Yes. So I have to get him back again. Yes, now. yes, so, you know, yes. Well, let's get down to upcoming events you are looking forward to. Well, one for <laughs> sure is December 20th. <laughs> okay, that's a big one. December 20th is the December big 20th. one uh, where I retire from the Department of Defense after, after 30 years of service, mm -hmm. civil service. So I'm looking forward to that. And then uh, just a few days after that retirement, me and the wife are going out to visit grandkids and babies and just show love uh, for Christmas. And we'll yeah, be going for a week. The wedding was in California? Yes, yeah, Simi Valley, California. <laughs> we loved it out there. And I made my wife really nervous because I was so amazed at how beautiful the mountains and the okay. hills were. Okay. Uh, it looked like they were carved out of marble that uh, I had to be careful to stay in my lane. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she helped me stay in my lane. <laughs> okay, I got you. Yeah. Yeah. You uh, seem to be so passionate about whatever you're doing, whether it's artist, a musician, uh, your ministry, or whatever you're doing. You seem to be so passionate about it, you know, and and what are you uh, mainly excited about? I, 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 I know you mentioned about retiring. That's an excitement, you know, and you're, I'm excited. you're still honeymooning. And, yeah, I'm still and that's honeymooning. A, <laughs> that's well, the thing about it, and this is what's amazing. Um, my daughter wrote a song called Worth the Wait. Mm -hmm. And when I look at my beautiful, amazing wife, she was definitely worth the wait. Um, okay. I went through some things. I really did. I, I was separated for four years. Okay. I was divorced for nine years. Okay. I was celibate that whole entire nine years. Mm. I kept myself before God. Okay. And I waited. And even before I met my wife, I waited like five years. I just didn't even date. Mm. I was like, I am waiting for who I know could be a good help me mm -hmm. and, and love me. And my wife, Tina, is just one of the most marvelous, beautiful souls I've ever met. And she was definitely worth that wait. It may not have been love at first sight, but she said you were the one too, that when you guys first met, that you were the one too. Well, it wasn't like a date in a year or two years or whatever, you know. It, it took her a while to see me, <laughs> to see my heart. But the first couple of times I spent with her, I just knew she was special. Okay. And then she, I met her at Gojo's restaurant right here in Waukegan. Oh. She was a part of a committee, committee for Afrofest okay. and to, to pick the talent. Mm -hmm. And I was meeting someone about a commission, and she happened to see me, and I saw her. And so I went over and I introduced myself the second time they had their committee meeting. And I told her about my artwork and I, my music and my daughters. And she called me a few days later, and we talked for, I think, I, I talked her to death. I talked, <laughs> I talked to her for an hour and a half. 
And then the second date, I think we went on, I told her, you know, I'm looking for a wife. <laughs> right. You know? And she was like, well, I'm not looking for a husband. <laughs> you know, I like you, but, uh, you know, she just thought I was talking stuff. Right. But uh, one day she sat down with me on my front porch and we just talked. And she told me that was the day she saw my heart. Mm. And uh, she's, uh, I'll, I'll, you're going to make me cry. Well, okay, but I'm we're so going to go on this. Yeah, I'm so grateful. <laughs> I'm just so grateful. I'm, I'm very, very excited. And if you ask me why am I so passionate yeah. about everything I do, it's because I authentically care about everyone I serve. Okay. Everything I do is in some way a ministry. Mm -hmm. When I play music for people, I don't know what they've gone through. Yeah. But if I play it with my all my heart, my whole heart, I might be the difference between them killing themselves yeah. or them feeling like they can make it another day. So I play from my heart more than I play from a chart. When I draw, I paint from an authentic place because I might be painting someone else's experience. They may want to express. I may articulate what they were feeling. Okay. If, if I share a word from God, I share it in a way that I try to break it down so they can understand. Like one message I shared was called, how do you measure the distance between if and when? From Luke 23, where you got two thieves on the cross next to Jesus. Mm -hmm. One said, if you be the son of God. One okay. said, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. Okay. Both were in the presence of God, but each represented a mindset. And sometimes that's what we face when we're going through hardship. The facts of our circumstances can, can sometimes rob us of the conscientiousness of God's promises. Mm -hmm. We cannot let the facts rob us of the truth. The facts may be our circumstances, but the truth is his word. Fact may be I've got all these enemies around me and it seems like I don't see no way out. But the truth is if I keep my mind stayed on him, he'll keep me in perfect peace. The fact may be they're threatening to, to cut off my lights or gas. But the truth is he's a present help in a time of trouble. So what you do is you share from your heart and give people hope because one irrefutable fact about life, you'll get no further than the place where you quit. Mm -hmm. So I look at everything that I do as me authentically caring. And when I authentically care, then I'm motivated by love. And then I can bring God into it, into it in his power. Because he said, if he be lifted up, he would draw all men unto him. Said, not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, say the Lord. So I want to do th everything motivated by his spirit. And therefore, the power to overcome whatever we face, we can. If we don't let the facts rob us of the truth. Mm -hmm. And people really don't understand they didn't understand at that time what they were doing. He said, if I be lifted up, right? Yes. So they were lifting him up. <laughs> they didn't know what they were doing. They didn't know. But he said, if I be lifted yes. up, I will draw men unto me. Yes, he did. That's what he said. Oh, boy. That's what he said. So I try to lift them up with everything I do. That's my motivation. That's my motivation. I'm not trying to be better than nobody else. Yeah. I just, Lord, help me be all that you created me to be and I can give you glory, that I can make a difference in someone's life yeah. in a positive way. Now, what encourages uh, uh, you about the times that we're living in? Well, the God is still God, and God sits on the throne. And anything the devil's doing, he's only doing it by permission. Okay. No matter how mighty he seems to be, God is still almighty. So. I look at it as it's still all in his hands. I, I, I never let the chapter tell me the story. Mm -hmm. This may be an unfortunate and a dark chapter, but it's not our whole story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm in a win-win situation. So that's why I had joy. You, to, to live is for Christ and to die is the gain. Okay, I'll okay. just be in his presence. So that's why I have hope. That's why I have hope. And there's a lot of good people out there the thing is, is they don't get press time. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're only going to put on the news the bad news. Every day. But there's a lot of good people out here. 
It's just that, like I said, they don't pat themselves on the chest and the back and, and run and grab a microphone. They, they just out there, but you got to find them. And the thing is, when you look at how big and bad this were, I have two kids okay. all right, uh, that are born to me. And then I have other kids through my relationship with my wife. Okay. I've got Rashad, I've got Daniel, I've got Akelia. You know, those are my kids through my marriage. Okay. I've got Sean, my son-in-law, who's married to Akelia. They have three beautiful grandbabies mm -hmm. named TJ, who will, he, this, this kid is the most gifted athlete I've ever seen in my life. Six years old, got the talent of, of anyone at any event. I mean, the kid is just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. TJ, Carter Kai, super intelligent, super, super intelligent. Uh, and then we've got uh, little Bryson Jax. Uh, and then we've got my grandson, Brendan. Uh, we've got just phenomenal grandkids and I have hope for them. And people say, well, this world is so this, this world is so that, it's so bad. All that, okay, well, they, we got issues, and there's no doubt, and they require some serious work. But mm -hmm. it's only through hope that you can do it. If you feel it's hopeless, then you're not even exercising the effort to make things better. We can make a difference one day at a time, one smile at a time, one handshake at a time. Take the time to get to know people around you. Say hello, mm -hmm. introduce yourself, encourage somebody. You can make a difference. The thing is, is when you get to the point where you don't believe you can, then you won't. Well, I hate to ask you this question because you're so positive about what you do. You're positive, you're compassionate and so forth. But what frustrates you or disappoints you about the times we're living in? Well, what frustrates me and disappoints me is I think that so many people are robbed of potential treasure in friendships and relationships because they prejudge people without getting to know them. Mm -hmm. They assume things about you without taking the time to get to know you. That, that's painful to me because one of the things that I found and that my mom taught me is that the treasure of what someone is is inside of their heart. Mm -hmm. You know, my eighth grade teacher, Miss Leslie Shapiro, is one of my lifelong friends and I consider her another mother to me. Mm -hmm. My eighth grade teacher, her and her husband paid for my last semester of college. Wow. I wouldn't have my degree right now. When I got married in Simi Valley, California, she was there. Okay. She was there. We just had dinner over her house with her granddaughter as, you know, the treasure of life is really about loving people authentically. And, and because of that, your life is richer for it. I, I have my haters. Oh yeah. You know, you're gonna have somebody that hates you. <laughs> they don't even wanna get to know you, but that's okay, I don't hate them. I, I believe I'm not going to let anyone live rent free in my mind. Mm -hmm. Well, what ways do you serve in your church? Well, right now I'm the music director at Christian Faith Fellowship Church okay. in Waukegan at 228 North County Street. I am pastored by pastors Willie and Kathy Moten. Okay. Our phone number is 847-244-2332. Uh, I just ministered last night uh, the message that your fig leaves does not solve the issue of your fellowship, your broken fellowship last night. Uh, so he's, he's grooming me. He stood by my side when I uh, officiated my first wedding. Um, for seven years, I was at the L Lake County Jail, mm. ministering to the people that are incarcerated there. Um, and like I said, I'm music director at the church and occasionally I'm called on to, to preach and minister, mm -hmm. do graphic design, 
do whatever I can to be a service to my church and my pastors and the people at my church and extend that love to everyone that I come across, whether I'm playing in Germany, whether I'm playing in, <laughs> you know, wherever I get to play. Um, I was also a part of a, as a substitute with an amazing person, um, amazing person named Nick Sahogios. And uh, I was a part of the Elton John, Billy Joel tribute band. Mm. I've also played with Mr. Archie Parks. He's a phenomenal, phenomenal keyboardist. He's really a local legend. He's amazing. To me, he's like, he's like a mixture of, uh, of uh, Herbie Hancock and uh, you name the greatest pianist in this area, he's amazing. He's like science fiction. I've had the pleasure of working with uh, just an amazing group of people. Every musician in Lake County, there's a young bass player named Dave, David James who plays with the Lloyd Steffens Band. I played with Lloyd Steffens. I played with David. Uh, David is a phenomenal bass player. Uh, Devarius Wilson, I could go on. Um, so if I didn't say you by name, blame it on my <laughs> mind, but not my heart. Every musician in Lake County, y'all are monsters. I love, respect, and appreciate every single one of you. Now, um, I cannot end the program without asking you or stating that on your epitaph it will be date of birth dash date of death mm -hmm. now describe the things that you're doing between that that god is going to be held and holding you responsible for wow that's a it's only question. it's only what you do between the dash that's that counts right. as far as God's concerned. That's right. That's right. Well, and one it kind of ties into what we mentioned about knowing your purpose on earth. Who kind of ties into that too? Well, I would like to, if people would look back on me, that he was someone who genuinely cared and used mm -hmm. every gift he had to, mm -hmm. in some way, be a service to his fellow man. I tried to make their life a little better with the time I was given. And that every gift and talent, I give God all of the glory. I take none of it. Mm -hmm. I give him the glory. And that he be glorified and that his people in are in some way edified. If I did that, then I believe God can tell me, well done, thou good and faithful servant. So this is the uh, legacy that you would like to leave here on this earth. Amen. And also my amazing children, Aaron and Rachel Hutchison. They were my purpose. They are always going to be a part of my heart and my purpose. And to be able to raise them and to groom them and for them to be the good people they are today, I'm so grateful. Mm -hmm. And then to a tribute to your band, what have you done recently? Well, we just recently did the 30th anniversary for the North Chicago Public Library. Okay. And then before that, we also did it. Uh, last year, we were at Community Days in North Chicago, North Chicago Community Days. We also did AfroFest. And uh, we're open to any other uh, corporate or uh, events that uh, can present themselves to us. Uh, I manage and, and run the band, but I love and respect every single one of us. And Do you yourself have a bucket list? Wow, that's a good question. <laughs> that's a good question. Mm -hmm. I, I think my bucket list is to uh, be able to recognize opportunities that I have to serve. Some of the greatest messages I've ever shared were not prepared texts. Okay. Some of the greatest messages was just be able to recognize someone had a need, and I said the rhema word that they needed to hear at the time that they needed to hear it. So it's not about my glory. If I can do things that give God glory, that's, that's my bucket list. I want to be able with every... See, I didn't have to live through my first bout of heart failure. 
Okay. I didn't have to live through my second bout of heart failure. I didn't have to live through this burn. Mm -hmm. But God has given me the grace. And when he touched me to heal me, and the thing about it that I learned is that your scars are proof that the wound has been healed. Mm. I may have a scar, but I'm not lo no longer walking around wounded. But if I can help facilitate the healing of someone else, that's it. That's it. It's not about something grandiose for me, mm -hmm. but just that I was a part of somebody else's blessing. Let that be my legacy. It's kind of hard to do this, but of all of your accomplishments, um, what are the uh, most you're proud of? Without a doubt, my kids. <laughs> okay. My kids, uh, to, to, to raise them and to see the young people that they have become, uh, that, is, that is like num numero uno. Um, I'm a father. I love my children. And uh, I'm honored that I was able to play a role in their life and, uh, and to help teach them and mold them and cultivate their gifts. And to see how they've turned out, that's, that's the greatest thing. That is mm -hmm. the greatest. Mm -hmm. Well, you have probably have mentioned this, but retirement is near. Yes. I think you said the 20th of December. The 20th of this Friday, December 20th. <laughs> I know the day of the week. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Right, right. Then what specifically are you going to do after retirement? Well, I know you Mon have Mon Monday we're flying to California. <laughs> okay. Monday we're flying to California, and then one of the biggest priorities I have is to finish my book. Finish my book. Oh, okay. Finish my book. Finish the book. Because I didn't mention that you're an artist too, though, right? You're yeah, you did. I, I mean, an author. I'm author. Sorry. Yeah, I'm working on the book, and uh, I have a lot of poetry that I've written. But this book is called "Living in the Fifth Dimension," and it has to do with seemingly taking nothing and making something out of yourself, and it deals with a step-by-step -step process that every human being can take to mm -hmm. give meaning and purpose to their life, even in the midst of change. So that's getting back to that purpose in the midst of change. We find it in service and serving others. Ladies and gentlemen, we're again, we've been talking with Minister William Hutchinson, Jr. of Zion, Illinois. And he's been sharing information with us about finding purpose in the midst of change. And we hope that you have been benefited uh, by, by his synopsis of uh, we could go on and on. As you know, he's very garrulous and informative. Uh, and he's uh, volunteered to promulgate the information to us. So Minister Hutchinson, thank you very much thank again. Thank you so much for having me. Thank take you. Take I know my ratings are going up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We thank you for viewing another awareness session on Community Forum. My name is Dr. Wardell Brooks, Sr., your host.